Hey, welcome back. Thanks for joining us for this uh, third video here in our Seder series. And um, again, this is a special evening and we're going to be talking about quite a bit. Um, what I want you to do uh, right now today is uh, I want you to take a look at this. Um, and I'm actually going to put this full screen so that you can see it. You'll notice um, right here is the shank bone on this plate. So if you had a, uh, a plate out in front of you of all the Seder food, you would notice the shank bone here. Um, here's some garlic and, and maybe some other things that uh, they would eat on a regular basis. Here's an egg. Um, and I'm going to get to some of these other things. I also shared yesterday about the parsley and the salt water. So where we're going today is I really want to focus on this issue of the shank bone. Now, with that said, you may not have a shank bone. So uh, a chicken bone can can work. Um, remember in the uh, in the scriptures, God gave a delineation of what could be sacrificed um, and acceptable to him in sacrifices. And so for us, I think a, a chicken bone can work as well, just to, for our kids and, and folks to be able to, to really get a hold of it. And um, you say, oh, that's gross or whatever. It's, it's not as gross as you may think. We, we need to feel this, touch this to see so that we can understand the symbolization that goes on with what's rep being represented here on the Seder plate. So uh, with that, let's continue on in our, our study uh, today. And, and, you know, this might be a little longer than my 13 minutes that I've been doing, but I think it's going to be an incredible blessing for you as well. So let's take a look. Today, we're going to look at the bone on the plate, and this is the lamb shank bone, or what the uh, Hebrews are in the Seder is called a zeroa. Um, a chicken bone from the drumstick or a leg can be uh, work for your benefit as well if you need to. So this reminds us of the central theme of the Passover. It was to take the blood of the lamb and to put it on the posts and lintel of the Israelites' doors so that the angel of death uh, would pass over that house. The blood of the lamb is what saved them from death. Here's the passage that I want you to be aware of. It's found, if you want to take it out, um, you can be reading it yourselves in um, Exodus chapter 12, verses 3 to 8. But speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth of this month, they are each one to take a lamb for themselves, according to their father's households, a lamb for each household. Now, if the household is too small for a lamb, then he and his neighbors nearest to his house are to take one accord to the number of persons in them, according to what each man should each to eat, you are to divide the lamb. Your lamb shall be an unblemished male, a year old. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall uh, keep it until the 14th day of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel is to kill it at twilight. Moreover, they shall take some of the blood and put it on the doorposts and on the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the flesh that same night roasted with fire, and they shall eat it with the unleavened bread and bitter herbs. So here you want to ask a question of your family and everybody that's around. Um, why choose the lamb four days before it must be killed and bring it into the house with the family? I mean, stop and consider that for a moment. L look at that lamb. He's so soft and cuddly and, and uh, you know, plush, if you will, the, the wool on him. You just want to snuggle him up in your arms and just pet him and get get real cozy with him. And I'm sure he's nuzzling because he's still a, a little lamb. He's not, um, you know, a, a big sheep, so to speak, that makes it more unruly and unwieldy in the house. So why? Well, there's two main reasons Um and the first is that the Egyptians were a uh, civilization that worshipped many gods, um, a lot of different gods out there, a pantheon of gods, one of which was um, a sheep. And so this 
uh, animal represented to them um, one of their gods, and it infuriated them that they would bring it into their home, and it just it caused more of a divide between the Egyptians and the Israelites than what needed, you know, God was trying to really separate them because the Egyptians wanted the Israelites as slaves, um, and they were willing to put up with quite a bit of their their nonsense, so to speak. But this really just made a, a rife between the two and separated them even more to the point where after all of the plagues that God has already brought to the Egyptians, um, he is ready to just tell them, you know what, we just want you out of here now. So the Egyptians just, they've had enough. They want the Israelites to leave. But it wasn't just that. Number two, it, it applied to the nation of Israel itself. Lambs are cute and cuddly. We talked about that. The children and some adults would grow attached to that lamb. And when it came time to sacrifice, there would be an emotional attachment to that animal. It would hurt. God wanted this to be a sign of the salvation that would come through the sacrifice of his son for the Israelites' salvation, for our salvation, from our sin. God wanted us to feel the cost that was being paid that's why Paul writes in the New Testament that you are bought with a price. You're bought with the blood of Jesus Christ. So we would appreciate our salvation. Not only did the blood of this lamb serve as the mark um, that would save, from, save the Israelites from the angel of death, but the meat from this cooked lamb was the sustenance. It was the provision that was given to them by God for energy and provided them um, a way out of Egypt. That lamb represented salvation and provision, just like Jesus does for us. You want to take some time right now and go back and look at 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 26. And I, take, um, I encourage you just to take this time. You can put pause on this video, read that with your family, and realize that this is part of what we celebrate every a month when we celebrate the Lord's Supper. There is a direct correlation and connection between the Seder meal and our celebration of the Lord's Supper. Why don't you take that time right now and, and uh, read that as a family. Today is what we typically celebrate during Holy Week as Maundy Thursday. And Maundy comes from the Latin um, to mandate. And what that means is this is the day we typically typically celebrate the Lord's Supper because Jesus commanded us to, right? So why, though, why all this drama and celebration, if you will, around these things? Well, because they serve lamb at a traditional Seder meal. John the Apostle um, wrote and spoke to crowds saying, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He was pointing directly at Jesus and sharing with everybody that he was God's sacrificial lamb, being served up by God himself to take away your sin, my sin, and the entire world's sin if we would put our trust in him. Remember, God uses everything on this Seder plate to teach us about his great salvation in Jesus. So Jesus is our salvation. He said in uh, Luke chapter 19, verse 10, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. That's why Jesus came. He was seeking all of those who had gone astray, those who had rejected God, those who had been hurt by other people who didn't want anything to do with God. And he was trying to get a hold of them, rope them and bring them back in so that they would see and understand who God was and his great love. Jesus, the Lamb of God, came to serve not to be served. Matthew chapter 20, verse 28 says, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. That's what was going on. Here's this picture being played out that this pure holy lamb or this pure unblemished lamb from the flock, no broken bones, no blemishes, no imperfections whatsoever was going to be killed. The blood would save from the angel of death and the meat would give um, sustenance and energy and provision for those Israelites who ate it to get out of Egypt for their salvation from slavery and the bondage of sin. 
Jesus came to do that for us as well. He came to serve, be served up, if it were, um, by God Almighty on our behalf to save us. So this is why we celebrate communion as disciples of Christ. We, by celebrating, we are reaffirming that Jesus, uh, what Jesus taught us and saying that we want to serve as he served us. We want to serve others through love so that they may come to trust Jesus and his salvation so that they can see how much God really does care, his compassion, his um, mercy. It is through God's love and mercy that we draw people to himself so that they can see and experience this love of God that will lead them to salvation. So this morning, as I'm just going through things, um, I'm, I'm coming right here, and, and this shank bone that just sits on the plate, um, it, it has a whole lot more symbolization to it than just a portion of, of lamb to eat or or a chicken, uh, chicken leg that we're going to uh, eat or, or just pick through. Um, it represents our salvation. It represents the example um, of Jesus and how we're to serve the world with love. Take a look at this. Jesus said this, For I gave you an example that you should also do as I did to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a slave is not greater than his master, nor is one who is sent greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Well, folks, I really want you to grasp this today. Because the reality of what's going on is as we gather tonight, we're not able to celebrate and pass the bread and the wine. We're not able to wash each other's feet. We're not able to celebrate this um, this example, once again, of what Jesus did for us. But, you know, we, we don't have to actually put into practice those symbols, that type of service, that ritual, for us to begin to do exactly what that shank bone represents on that plate. You and I can begin serving one another in love. We can guard our tongues. We can help bring in groceries. We can uh, go out and cut the lawn or rake the leaves and, and help clean up um, things around our yard, but more importantly, not just for mom and dad, but for our neighbors, those who are older, those who are, aren't able to care. We can, we can befriend those who um, just quite honestly are unlovely, who just are, are being nasty to us. We can demonstrate the love of Christ. That's what this, this little shank bone represents. It represents the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So as we celebrate tonight, gather as a family, um, sit down over your meal, really, you know, take some time to talk about this. And how is that going to change your lives? Ask yourselves around the table, how is um, understanding that Jesus is the sacrifice that takes away the sin of the world and that he's given us an example to follow? How are we going to actually demonstrate loving people to Jesus? What are we going to do? Um, to love somebody to Jesus. Hey, folks, enjoy tonight. Enjoy your family and praise God that we get to do this in peace and that we can take time to pray with him. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.